Hey Vinod, are you done with your exam preparation? Yes, Didi, I am almost done. That's really great. I follow Concept Candy, a YouTube channel, which had made my preparation easy, Didi. Oh, really? That's nice. Okay, but on which lesson do you have exam tomorrow? History chapter, from hunting, gathering to growing food. Okay. Okay, come, let's go. Mom is calling us for dinner. After coming, we'll discuss more about the chapter. Yes, the discussion will help me more to write the exam well. Come, let's go. This is Ome. So today we are going to start off with 6th class history NCRT textbook, chapter 2. As we start with the title of the lesson, From Hunting, Gathering to Growing Food. Okay, let's start our lesson. The earliest people, why were they on a move? Why did the earliest people had always wanted to move? What do we describe them as? They are hunter-gatherers. Why do we call them as hunter-gatherers? The name comes from the way in which they got their food. How did they get their name? In the way they, in which they got their food. Generally, they hunted wild animals, caught fish, birds, gathered fruits, roots, nuts, seeds, leaves, stalks and eggs. How did they get their name? In the way in which they collected or got their food. What Generally, what did they do? They hunted wild animals, caught fish, birds, gathered some fruits, roots, nuts, seeds, leaves, stalks and eggs. Okay? Now, hunter-gatherers move from place to place. Why? There are some reasons for this. The first reason is if they stayed at a place for a long time, they would have eaten up all the available plant and animal sources. Therefore, they would have they would have to go elsewhere to in, in search of food. What is the first reason? If they stayed at a place for a long, the resources of plants and animals would be over. If they are over, what would they eat and survive? So they have to be always on a move. Moving on to the second reason, animals move from place to place, either in search of smaller prey or in case of deer and wild and cattle, in search of grass or leaves. That is why those who hunted them had to follow their movements. What does the second reason say is, some animals move from place to place in search of grass and leaves which people can eat. So, according to the animal's movement, these people had to move. This is the second reason. Moving to the third reason, plants and trees bear fruits in different seasons. So, people may have moved from season to season in search of different kinds of plants. What's the third reason? It says that, as you know, trees and plants bear fruits in different seasons. So, they have to note, they had to notice the seasons and then move according to the seasons what's the fourth reason people plants and animals need water to survive water in water is found in lakes streams and rivers while many rivers and lakes were, are perennial what do you mean by perennial with water throughout the year okay others are seasonal people living in their banks would have had to go in search of water during dry seasons. What's the fourth reason? Many lakes, streams and rivers were perennial, but some were seasonal, which means that there will be water in only a particular season. People living in, in the coast of uh, seasonal rivers had to move to other places in search of water in dry seasons. Why do we know about these people? How do we know about these people? This is a question. Let's do it. Archaeologists have found some of things of hunter-gatherers made and used. It is likely that people made and used tools of stone, wood and bone. What did the old time? Now, we are having iron machinery, steel, etc. But in the older time, they, they didn't have steel or iron. They used stone, wood and bone as their materials to make tools to be survived some of these stone tools were used to cut meat and bone what were some used for to cut meat and bone 
some other we used to scrape the bark and hide hides right what were hides animal skins they used animal skins to hide themselves from other wild animals from eating them away they also used to chop fruits and roots to eat some may have been attached to handles or bone right some stones would be attached to bone or wood to make spears and arrows for hunting right some fast animals were there so they hunted them using these things other tools were used to chop wood which was used as firewood wood was also to make huts and tools okay this these are the pictures which shows here this stone tool is used for cutting the meat this is used for digging right? you can see there is a shape change size etc now choosing a place to live in how did these people choose a place to live right hunter gatherers lived in many places only some okay many sites were located near sources of water such as rivers and lakes what many people old hunter gatherers loved the places to live they were near the coast or near the water sources like rivers and lakes they loved to stay there there what was the other reason where did they live the place where they could get stone good quality stone easily for making tools okay these are the two reasons where people could live more what is the first they need water source what is the second reason they need good quality stones for weapons right there's a picture of old stone now finding out about fire traces of ash have been found here where karnul caves this suggests that people were familiar with the use of fire older times there was no fire after it was invented how was it used fire could have been used in many things as a source of light to roast meat to scare away animals these are the three reasons used at that time of fire what are the reasons source of light to cook meat and to scare away animals okay a changing environment about 12000 years ago there was a major changes in climate of the world with a shift in relatively warm conditions in many areas this led to development of grasslands this in turn led to an increase of number of deer antelope goat sheep and cattle that is animals that survived on grass or herbivorous animals and those who hunted these animals now followed them learning about their food habits and their breeding seasons what did the people do what at that time happened or on 2 12000 years ago what happened there was a major change in the climate because of that change uh, warm climate change there was a development of grasslands what are grasslands a land full of grass if the grasslands increase the grass eating animals will automatically increase what are the grass eating animals deer antelope goat sheep and cattle if they increase and they move to the grasslands the people who hunted them had also to move had also to follow them and learn their food habits what did they eat and what their breeding seasons and this is what the people knew i mean wanted to know at that time the beginning of farming and herding this was also a time when several grain bearing grasses including wheat barley and rice grew naturally in different parts of the subcontinent men women children probably collected these grains as food and learned where they grew and when did they ripen at the time at this time what happened there was a sudden growth of some edible grains such as wheat barley and rice men women and children collected all these grains as food and learn and learned where they grew and when did they ripen when the seeds ripen 
This may have led them to think about growing plants on their own. In this way, they became farmers. Right? Now, people could also have attracted animals to tame animals by leaving food for them near their shelters. What the hunter-gatherers also did was to tame animals by leaving some food, what they, they eat, what they eat near their shelters to tame the animals. The first animal to be tamed was wild ancestor of the dog. Later, people encouraged animals that were relatively gentle to come near the camps where they lived. These animals such as sheep, goat, cattle and also big pig and also pigs lived in herds and most of them ate grass. At this time, the first animal to be tamed is a wild ancestor of a dog. And people also encouraged animals that were gentle, not like lions and tigers, that were gentle like cattle, pigs, goats, etc. to be tamed. Often, people protected these animals from attacks by other wild animals. This is how they became herders. What we learnt in this para, this para is how they became farmers. But in this para, we learnt how, how they became farmers. Herders, right? Now moving on. Domestication. What is domestication? Simple. Making animal capable of our use. Okay. This is the teeth of some domesticated animal. This is the teeth of a wild animal. You can easily differentiate between them. These are small and normal. But these are big. These teeth are used to tear meat. Right? A new way of life. If you plant a seed, right? if you plant a seed, you'll notice that it takes some time to grow. There may be, it, it may take several days, several months, several weeks, several years to grow. Right? But this, the old people did not know. So, when the people began growing plants, it meant that they had to stay in the same place for a long time, looking after plants, watering them, weeding the extra grass, driving away animals and birds till the grain ripened. At this time, what happened? The pea, if they wanted to grow the grain, they had to they had to stay at the same place, looking after the plants. What they what all did they do? looking after the plants, watering them, weeding them and driving away animals from eating the plant away till the grain ripe, till the grain ripen and then the grain had to be usefully right used now as grain had to be stored for both food and seed people had to think of ways of storing it in many areas they began making large clay pots and wove baskets and dug pits in the ground. After you grow seeds, you have to store them or you have to store them really carefully because at that time there were really wild animals which could eat away them. So what did the people think and do? They made large clay pots for storing them. They wove baskets and they also dug pits in the ground to store the seeds. Storing animals. Animals multiply naturally. Besides, if they are looked after carefully, they provide milk, which is an important source of food and meat whenever required. In other words, animals that are red can be used as a store of food. What are animals used for? If they are carefully red, we can get milk from them, which is a useful component or useful important source of food and meat whenever required. Finding out about first farmers and herders, right? These are from what evidences of early farmers and herders were found all over the subcontinent. Some of the most important ones are in the northwest, in present day Kashmir, and east and south India. To find out whether these sites were settlements of farmers and herders, scientists study evidence of plant and animal bones. Plants, they study plants and animal bones. 
One of the most exciting finds include of burnt grain. What's the most exciting part? They found a burnt grain. Scientists can identify these grains. And so we know that a number of crops were grown in different parts of the subcontinent. They can also identify the bone of different animals. Towards a settled life. Archaeologists have found traces of huts and houses in at some sites. For instance, Burza home in it is present in present day Kashmir. It's present in Kashmir. People built pit houses which were dug in the ground with step leading into them. What did the old people do or what did the archaeologists found in Burza home are pit houses with steps leading into them. Right? These may have been provided to shelter in cold weather. The archaeologists have also found cooking huts both inside and outside the huts, which suggests that depending on the weather, people would cook their food either indoors or outdoors. What else did archaeologists found? They found huts. What are huts? They are used for cooking. As we in present day we use tau, right? At that time they used hearths. They found them both inside and outside the hearths. Stone tools have been found from many sites as well. Many of these are different from the earliest Paleolithic tools, and this is why they are called Neolithic. Right? These include tools that were polished to give fine cutting edge and mortars and pestles were used for grinding grain and other plant produce. Mortars and pestles are used for grinding grain even today, several thousand years later. At the same time, tools of the Paleolithic types continue to be made and used and remember some tools were made also of bone. Many kinds of earthen pots have been found. There are sometimes decorated. They are sometimes decorated. They were used for storing food or things. People began using pots for cooking, especially grains like rice, wheat and lentils and that now become an important, important part of the diet. Besides, they began weaving cloth. They began to wear clothes using different kinds of materials, for example, cotton. And, uh, did things change everywhere at all, the, at all once? No, not quite. In many areas, men and women still continue to hunt and gather and elsewhere, people adopted farming and herding slowly over several thousand years. Besides, in some cases, people tried to combine these activities doing different things during different seasons. What all did people do? Some people were developed, but some did not. And other people, what did they do? They combined both the works. In some season, they would hunt, gather. In some season, they would grow and herd animals. A closer look, living and dying in Mehra. This site is located in a fertile plain near the Balon Pass, which is one of the most important routes into Iran. Merghar was probably one of the places where people learned to grow barley and wheat, okay, and also rare sheep and goats. Merghar was probably one of the places where people learned to grow barley and wheat and to rare sheep and goats for the first time in this area. It is one of the earliest villages that we know about. At this site, many animal bones were found. Bones of wild animals such as deer and pig and also bones of sheep and goat were found at Mehrgar. Okay. Other finds at Mehrgar include remains of square and rectangular houses. Each house had four or more compartments some of which may have been used for storage. What the archaeologists found at Mehrgar, they found square and rectangular houses. Each house had four or more compartments in them and some had used be 
as a storage place. When people die, their relatives and friends generally pay respect to them. People look after them and perhaps in the belief that there is some form of life or death. Life after death. Right? Burial is one such arrangement. Several burial sites have been found in Mehrgar. In one instance, the dead person was buried with goats which were probably meant to serve food and the next world. What did people do? They used, if a person dies, they used to bury them with some goats. What did they think is this would serve food for them in the next world. With this, we complete our lesson which is hunting, gathering to growing food. If you have some doubts, please leave them in the comment section. If you like the video, please like it, share it and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.